Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on another episode of For Your Eyes Only, the only place where you can learn a little bit about your eyes and have fun at the same time. We've been away for a little while, but we're finally back today with a Canada Day special episode for you, because honestly, what's more Canadian than talking about your eyes? Well, you all know my friend here, my partner in crime, my colleague, Dr. Einstein, who is very much in the Canada Day spirit, as you can see. Are you going to keep that on the whole time? Yeah? Okay. So if you remember our last video, we started the discussion on floaters. Part one was about those little protein clumps that can build up inside the gel inside our eyes, the vitreous. And today we're going to continue that discussion about floaters with part two. Now before we go into too much detail about the floater itself, we're going to take a look at our little eye model again. And Dr. E is going to show us a bit more information about the vitreous. Now as we discussed last time, the entire middle portion of the eye here is filled with the vitreous humor, that gel we talked about. But that gel is actually actually attached to different parts of the retina in the back of the eye. And as we age, that gel actually starts to shrink, it actually contracts and starts to pull away from the areas that it's stuck on in the back of the retina. And eventually it tends to detach. And the most common place for the vitreous to detach is actually the very back here where it's attached around the optic nerve. And because it's attached around the nerve, it has a sort of a ring-like pattern to that adhesion, so it pulls away, and most patients will see a round shape or a semicircular shape appear in front of their vision. So posterior vitreous detachments, or PVDs as we call them, usually are related to age-related changes in the eyes. But they can happen with younger patients. If you remember in one of our earlier episodes, we talked about nearsighted patients, and the reason that they're nearsighted is because their eyeball is actually a little bit larger than the average. So if you have a bigger eyeball, there's more stretch happening inside and more likelihood of that vitreous pulling away earlier. Now most often vitreous detachments are pretty benign, but there are some cases in which they can have some serious consequences. If the gel were to pull away and take a small piece of the retina with it, it can lead to uh, a retinal hole, a retinal detachment, and potential vision loss. And for that reason, we encourage any patients who notice any new types of floaters to come on in right away so we can take a look and make sure everything looks healthy inside your eyes. Alright folks, so that's all for part two of floaters. If you have any other questions about this topic or any other topic, feel free to reach out anytime. You can always catch us on Twitter. Here are our Twitter handles. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Happy Canada Day. We'll see you next time. I think you went a little over top of that hat. Are you even Canadian? Let me see your passport.